big gun. Today we're gonna take you through light force accessorization. Is that a word? Mobile elk hunting, tired of hunting without any lights at my truck. So we're gonna upgrade the truck. We're gonna do all the install ourselves DIY. And this is all in the name of a better elk hunting experience. Come along. Let there be light. We are going to do a light install. We're using Light Force. We handpicked all the pieces. So we're gonna slap on a couple of main beams right here. That's gonna require some Jake Webb welding. You can see my fogs are empty. We're gonna get two fog lights in there. We're gonna put a ditch light on both sides right out in front. We're gonna run all the switches to the front. Over here, we're gonna put a light on the back on top of the lightener rack here and here so you can tell like we have our work cut out for us for the ditch lights i'll show you guys what we got this bracket is going to get mounted underneath the hood and it comes out your windshield right here and there's going to be a rock 40 one of these bad boys bink like that and we're going to put it at a little bit of an angle and the purpose of that is going to be when we're driving down dirt roads in the desert or we're driving down dirt roads at night and we want to look for campsites where we want to look to our right and our left that light is going to shine in an angle to the left and to the right okay so this is a universal mount for the gmc trucks it's supposed to go from this bolt hole to that bolt hole and you guys can obviously see that guy's a little short so what i'm going to do is cut this move that up to here and i'll weld a piece of flat bar in between all right so this is a piece of inch and a half flat bar what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one clean cut and I'm going to make two pieces an inch and a half long and that's what I'll cut and weld in between that bracket. Alright, we're going to clean up all these edges and I'm going to put a little bevel here and here. That way when I cut that and I weld that, there's actually a place for the weld to go. So. The other side, clean it up, black paint, because new. Safety first, people. Compressed gas, NOS, argon carbon dioxide. That's your ground, ground clamp. Wire fed, this is a MIG gun. So this weld, if this was going anywhere else, you could leave that weld there, but it's going underneath the hood and we want it to be flush. So we're gonna grind these welds off and then we're gonna throw some paint on it because we don't want it to rust underneath the hood. It's just water's gonna get underneath there from rain and we don't want it to rust. So we're gonna throw some paint on it and we'll get it mounted up. These are gonna go on the front of Dan's bumper. These are an actual hybrid light. So this is an HID Allen LED. This is the HTX2 hybrid. And basically this thing is, I think this is nine inches, nine inch round light. But this beam, it will throw some light out there. So when we're in the desert and we're in the mountains, these things are gonna throw light a long ways. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make some brackets. We're gonna mount them to the front of the bull bar where the, we want these mounted. So I'm gonna cut out some flat bar. We'll weld it on the front of there. Basically, we need to figure out this bracket, this size, where it's gonna clear the grill, where we want it positioned into the grill, and then we'll chop some steel and weld it on. We'll go from there. All right, guys, so this is a piece of quarter inch by three flat bar. I'm cutting it four inches long. I'm gonna round the corners on the front. That's what's gonna get welded to the bull bar. We're gonna drill a hole in it, and those big lights are gonna get mounted on there. Um, we'll, we'll paint that afterwards so it doesn't rust. 
Okay, so this is a piece of flat bar. Got these corners rounded, got our hole marked. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a half inch hole here. That's where this light's gonna be mounted. This backside is going, what is gonna get welded to the bull bar. This is just a pilot hole. We're gonna drill that first and then uh, we'll step it up from there. Look at this is like pipe welder, farm welder, and this is like when you go to Walmart. That's how they do it. This is what the big round light is gonna get mounted to. We're gonna put this brace underneath. Basically we want we don't want this bracket vibrating. We don't want this light like flickering when you're going down the road. So you want that to be pretty solid. So that brace is gonna get welded underneath. We'll get this all welded up, get it painted, and we'll get these things mounted. Ross Hood. It's my favorite neighbor. What's up? So here's your dark tinted cover. This is a clear cover. This is gonna protect from rocks. This is gonna protect from bugs, debris. And depending on what state you guys are in, sometimes they don't allow this on the highway. So pop this guy off. Pop this guy on. Good to go. grandpa truck anymore some rock 20s we're gonna mount those right here so this lightener rack this bolt I'm gonna pull off this is the bracket that the rock 20 comes with and that brackets gonna get bolted there and that light is gonna kind of be protected in this housing here's the rock 20 you guys can see the fins in the back that hole is actually what that bracket goes to so that bolt goes through there and the nut is actually captured on this side here this way all right you guys so we're gonna put a couple of the rock 20s on the side of the lightner rack these lights are gonna shine basically to the left and the right when we're setting up camp or when we need to get stuff out of the boxes okay so here's how i got this mounted this cap comes off yeah so we got bolt washer lock washer nut nice and solid okay so the striker driving lights we're gonna put these down low in the bumper these are actually gonna be used as a fog light on this truck so pretty similar mount just like the HTX2 so on the GC down low right there is where a fog light would be we got these are gonna be our super bright driving lights and then obviously he's got uh, the headlight but there's no fog so I'm gonna make a mount and that's gonna get mounted in there we'll probably pull this out or I might have to cut this and I'll weld something up for that to get mounted to hey one thing that I should probably explain to you guys if you are gonna do something like this is when you're welding on your truck so like these brackets that we put on here and then I'm gonna get ready to put these brackets here. Just a little bracket for those strikers. Um, you need to disconnect your battery. So um, you don't want your computer or anything live while you're welding on your truck. You wanna make sure you pull the positive cable off, do all your work, do everything that you need to do, clean everything up, and then put it back on. Don't weld on your vehicle with your battery connected. That's not good. This is the striker. We're gonna use this for a fog light. So that'll be on its own switch and that'll be just for dealing with fog. So that's a Rock 40. That is gonna be used for driving on dirt roads, looking to the left and the right for either like campsites or just looking, you know, having a broader uh, pattern of light when you're driving down trails. A Rock 20, there's one on the opposite side. These are gonna be for setting up camp. So we can take that off. Um, that's gonna be for opening up these boxes, getting camp set up on the right or left. We have two more Rock 20s on the back. So these are gonna be on a switch where if this is gonna be, if Dan wants to use this for a backup light, he can flip that on while he's backing up. 
if he wants to set up camp off the back, if we're loading dirt bikes in the trailer, those lights are gonna help out a lot for doing anything off the back on the trailer, setting up camp. Pop that off, checked behind here, it was good. This is where we have my controls. So we're gonna go underneath there and then we can put little stickers on whatever each one does. Tight. These are for the HXT2. The yellow is for the LED, red is for the HID. We're running those together and we're putting those on one switch. Those are gonna turn on the same time with one switch. The black is gonna go directly to the battery. So we have a fuse here, we're going to that 30 amp fuse, tying these together. So both of those are gonna turn on with one switch. Okay, so we are wiring all the lights to this main box. What this is, is right here, this bus bar, these are to the switches. So you got eight different switches. You got all your fuses, you got your power, your main breaker. So this is the little tedious side of cutting, splicing, hooking things up that you wanna make sure is right because we don't want an electrical fire. All right, so you guys can tell we got both of those Rock 40s that are ditch lights tied together. So there's a butt connector in here that has shrink wrap built in, heated that up, shrink that down, and then threw black tape on it because we don't want that to get wet. These are both gonna go to this 20 amp breaker. So we got black, red. You loosen up these screws. Slide those underneath. We got matching, I'm gonna call those my cubes. And this light is mainly for getting into these compartments right over here. At night, you can just see what you're doing. I usually sleep on my cot right here. Coffee, toothbrush, boots, underwear, all this happens, this light's gonna be really handy. These are my strikers, and I got a fog one right here. Somebody's tailgating me. I'm gonna light them up on the freeway. <laughs> so we'll go reverse. These should be my ditch lights. What do you wanna call those, sides? No, I gotta do sides, man. Cause that's really what I use these ditch lights for is for the sides for when the elk try to jump out in front of you when you're driving. Do you know what I'm talking about, Jake? Yeah. <laughs> and we got room for Three more switches. I believe these are fives and that's a 10 amp, yep. but you got to run the big ones on the 20, no, the 30 amp. Yep. So let's go ahead, pop the hood and kind of show you what we did. All right guys, so this is basically the brain for the switches. What we got going on here is positive and negative coming from the battery into here. You have all these fuses, all of the lights all come into this bus bar here. So you got, Everything is running here. You got fuses for all the lights, wiring for the controller, and just keeps everything nice and clean, simple. That gets covered up there. This is a 60 amp breaker for this entire system. So you're running from your battery to here into this box. So if there is a problem, if something is short, something's gonna go wrong, this is gonna pop, and you're not gonna fry any of your wires. Everything is running along this harness. Everything is running underneath here. So try to keep everything nice and clean and tight. We'll probably get a wire loom and we'll cover up some of these wires with a, a wire loom just so they're nice and clean. These are an HID in the center, LED ring. We have the striker. These are gonna be used for a fog light. So up here on the hood, these are a Rock 40. This is a Rock 20. We wired these so you have one on the left, one on the right. Off the back of the truck we have two more Rock 20s. Um, so to wire these up, basically we did a horseshoe. So all these wires are ran down the Lightner rack, down the Lightner rack, across, and it goes down into the bed. And then there's a hole in the bed, got down into the frame, and we're running through the wire loom all the way up to the engine compartment. So that wire, you're coming down through here, into the bed. That's gonna come down to your frame rail and all the way down the frame. You're gonna come up into the engine compartment. Get into this loom, go across, tie into your switch panel. 
Um, let's look at the portable light, the strip. It's basically a portable LED light strip that runs off of either the battery or the cigarette lighter. It's got a switch here that is just touch sensitive, so you can touch it once, turns it off. 15 feet of wire, and it's got two little carabiners on the right and the left. And you can pretty much clip it wherever you want, turn it on. So this would be good to put like on a canopy. This would be good to put inside when Dan's sleeping in the canvas cutter. He could put this across the back and have that switch, turn it off, turn it on, getting ready in the morning at four leaving to go chase elk. So guys, stay tuned because we have one more truck to work on. Your power wagon. We're gonna add lights to it as well. And again, it's just for basically glamping, overlanding, and for us, it's about elk hunting. But hopefully we can show you kind of what we learned along the way. Thank you Light Force for taking good care of us. We plan to use the heck of it this fall. Stay tuned for more awesome action. We appreciate your support. We'll catch you on the next one.